my name is Stephen and I'm a wetland ecologist and I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process on how to delineate a wetland. But just remember that wetland delineation is a very complicated and involved process and takes many years to learn how to do by yourself. So this is just a very quick introduction and there's a lot more to it than what you'll see in this video. Cool, so I've arrived on my site and I am going to make a visual assessment of the landscape. And just having a look at the, the valley that we're in, I see that we're in a valley profile, so there's a distinctive valley bottom. And in the valley bottom there are some wetland vegetation species, some reeds, and that's a very clear indicator to me of where I want to start my soil sampling. So normally I will start in the wettest area of the wetland and work my way outwards. So I'll probably go and start at the bottom of the valley um, in an area where I'm fairly certain there is wetland and then I will sample outward uh, from there, so towards the, 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 the top of the valley side. So now that I am here in the bottom of the valley uh, and judging by the vegetation around me, I am really in a place that should be wetland. And I'm going to take a soil sample here because I want to have a look at what the soils are, uh, are like um, so that I can make a, an assessment of what soils I can expect as I delineate further up and downstream of this point. Um, and just so to calibrate what I'm seeing on the site. Normally when we are delineating, the National Water Act and the delineation manual state that you need to delineate at least down to 50 centimeters. So we've made a mark on our soil auger and we typically um, auger to that depth in order to find the bottom of the um, delineated wetland profile. So I've gone even further than the 50 centimeter mark and that's generally good practice. Now that I've collected my soil sample, I want to have a look at the soil itself. Um, and you can see as I had pulled it out, there are some measuring marks, which you can't really see anymore at the bottom here, but um, that's 50 centimeters worth of soil. So I'll have a look at the top bit and it's actually very, organic. You can see lots of root matter and it's quite mushy and I think that if I was to squeeze it there would be some water that would drip out of here. So I would say that this is um, quite organic and humusy and um, is in the beginning stages of peat formation. But then I noticed as I was augering um, the texture of the soil changed as you come down towards the 50 centimeter mark and it becomes a lot more clay-like. And you can see here, as I break it open, there are actually some really nice gray soils with some mottles, um, mottling being a result of fluctuating water tables. And that is a really nice gray uh, soil that is a good example of seasonal to semi-permanent wetland. Now that I've extracted my soil sample, I am going to have a look at it on the Munsell soil color chart. And the wetland delineation guidelines specify what colors on the Munsell soil color chart are wetland and what are not wetland. So now that I have taken my soil sample, I'm going to check the color of the soil to see if it falls within the wetland or very quickly about the Munsell soil color chart, 
the colors are divided according to the amount of red or the amount of yellow in the, the color. So I'll flick to the middle, which is the 10YR page. And you can see over here, it is our most commonly used page because about 75% of all soil colors will fall on this page. And as I flick more towards the R side, you can see that the colors start getting redder in their hue. And if I flick towards the more yellow side, you can see that the colors become more yellow. But generally good practice, it is good to start on the 10YR page to measure the level of yellow or red in your soil and then you can move towards the red side or move towards the yellow side. Just to note that there are some other pages called delay pages and important to note that if you find a soil that fits on any of these colors every single color on this page is considered wetland so it's always good to check these um, because this is where you'll find your gray and almost bluey green soil colors on these pages. Something that's really important is as you auger, you're twisting and that often smears the soil colors together. So an important thing when you want to read your soil color is you want to get a clean face. So if you have a look at this soil sample over here, um, it's been smeared by the auger blade. And what I want to do is I want to break that open so that I get a clean and undisturbed face. And that's the face of the soil profile that I want to, um, that I want to record and read on my soil color chart. So now that I have had a look at my soil um, and I've decided that this point that I've taken is either um, seasonal or permanent wetland, uh, judging by the soil color and the vegetation, I am going to record a GPS point where I took my soil sample and record some of the information if I'm doing it all on a GPS or I will have a notebook and I'll write down and number all of my soil samples. So this would be my sample one and I would record the Munsell soil color chart and do a brief description of the vegetation um, that I'm observing here. And once I've done that I'm going to move up slope so outside um, so away from the valley bottom up the slope towards where I think the boundary of the wetland might be. Now I've walked a couple of paces out of the valley bottom and I'm fairly certain that this is um, either out just outside or at the boundary of the wetland. So I'm going to take another auger point here and see what the soil tells me. So now that I've taken my second soil sample, we can have a look at the soil color and see whether or not we are inside, on the boundary or outside of the wetland. So now that I've taken another soil sample, I have looked at the soil color and I've decided that the soil color falls outside of the Munsell soil color bracket that defines a wetland. So 
I will then probably take a third soil sample point in between the valley bottom one that I took and this one on the valley side to find the wetland boundary at that third soil point. And again, I will record a Munsell soil color, a GPS point, as well as describe the vegetation for that third point. So you've seen one demonstration or the demonstration of one delineation point. And I would then go and delineate that or repeat that process all the way around my wetland. So all the way up one side at the top of the wetland and then all the way back down on the other side of the wetland. So that at the end, I will be able to take my data that I've collected and put it into a GIS software and map out where I have marked the wetland boundary using that. And I will then be able to generate and create a wetland delineation layer, um, which I will then be able to use for assessments, uh, management plans, um, and anything else that I might need it for. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you've learned something useful today and good luck out there uh, in your delineation pursuits. Just remember that the wetland community is here to help and we are a fun loving bunch of people and just reach out for any queries or questions. We're always happy to help and share our experience and knowledge.